Bom, salve, salve rapaziada, sejam bem-vindos a mais um vídeo, eu sou o Patrick Lopes, estamos aqui hoje em Nova York e hoje é um vídeo muito especial, hoje eu tô com um cara, um gringo aqui, ele vai falar um pouco com a gente Vamos apresentar ele primeiro What's up, man? How's it going? Thank hey, you so much going? for having me on our favorite neighborhood, right? Yeah, yeah, this is my favorite neighborhood, I worked here in this neighborhood for a few years but it's also been my hangout uh -huh. ever since I was in my college days Oi, tudo bem? Everyone, I don't know Portuguese too well, but I am a lifelong New Yorker, originally from Puerto Rico, and I absolutely love this city. I run Urbanist Exploring Cities, where I show neighborhoods all around the world. And this is one of my favorite neighborhoods here in Nolita. I'm going to give you a tour of the best food and also history of Nolita. Vamos lá, rapaziada. Hoje, só para vocês entenderem, Nolita é um bairro bem pequeno aqui em Manhattan, bem espremidinho entre o Sorro, Chinatown e Little Italy. E hoje em dia é um bairro cool. Muita gente jovem, os hipsters e tudo mais, mas nem sempre foi assim. Um, can you tell them where we are first? So we are right now at the border of Soho, which is this way, and Nolita, which is a portmanteau that stands for North of Little Italy. Oh, so these, these cops are very important because this park is named after one of the most famous cops in New York City history. His name was Petrosino. And Petrosino was basically the mafia hunter. This guy was the shortest cop. He was only like 5'4". Four, four. He was very short. Martin Scorsese has recently bought the rights to make a movie about him. So this guy fought uh, the mafia and the black hand. And here we see his likeness. He fought the mafia at the black hand. However, he tried to chase one specific mafioso, Cassiofero. He went all the way to Sicily to investigate. And unfortunately, he was gunned down in the street corner in Palermo. You know what people ask me a lot on my lives? Patrick, what is those like structures over all buildings in New York City? Can you explain? Yeah. <laughs> that might be the reason for those structures. People might crash into the buildings. Uh, these are scaffolding. Scaffolding basically is to protect any debris from the building from falling down. Oh, so it doesn't mean that it's necessarily on construction? At this moment. Ah, good question. So New York City regulations is very tough. So that means sometimes it's cheaper to just leave the scaffolding than repairing the building. Oh my God. And hence, that's why we have scaffolding all around New York. Is not so touristy compared to Junior's, but in my opinion has the fluffiest cheesecakes ever that I've ever tried in my life. It tastes like biting into clouds. So do you want to try? We can, sure. split, we can split one in half. Split one. And I'll order it. Okay. And you can film as you please. Hey, how's it going? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. We'll have a, I'll have one uh, cherry cheesecake, please. Sure. Do you want it on a plate or to go? On the plate. Sure. And is there anything else I can get for you? That's all. Yeah, that would be great. So the classic would be the the strawberry and the cherry. Those are the, like the two classic classic okay, toppings. Thank you so much. Oh, I never saw a cheesecake like that. So I'm gonna split it in half and then we'll eat outside. Yeah, this is a, a tiny little mini cheesecake. <laughs> All right, I got this mangled piece already attached. So you grab the other half. This half. This half. Yeah. This whole half. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, this is a lot. <laughs> well, <laughs> Just take bites out of it. It's like a, you gotta be a proper New go. Yorker. You didn't one gulp. Cheers. Cheers. And describe the texture because I think that's very important with uh, with. Let me get another bite yeah. to describe the texture because it's not like just soft. It's like it's creamy and like right. I don't know how to explain. How would you explain? It's super creamy um, and also it's it's I love the the contrast with the creme uh -huh. cr crust on the bottom. It's like sweeter than the, the white part. Yeah. That's really good. Mm -hmm. And topped with um, with some cherries, which makes it really delicious. So this is a classic New York City cheesecake. And yeah, I went to college in City College of New York, which is um, in Uptown Manhattan in Harlem. What did you study? I studied, I have a degree in electrical engineering. Oh, okay. Yeah. So obviously I'm doing <laughs> what I studied. <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorite buildings in all of New York City. What is this? Brom Street ah, okay. in the center. What do you think it is? Or, I uh, think it's, uh, we need to cross the street to see uh, better. Yeah. 
I think it's something related to like a courthouse or like a city hall. Not city hall because it's not here. Um, courthouse maybe? That is a very good guess. So you got very close. It is the old police headquarters. This is where Petrosino, that famous cop, would have worked for a few months while when it was finishing construction. So but he never got to work here officially. That I'm a little bit unclear about. Uh -huh. But he worked in this he definitely worked in this neighborhood. <laughs> However, it's no longer a police headquarters. It is one of the most expensive condominiums in all of New York. The penthouse condominium that's in the dome, and you can shoot the B-roll, I assume, afterwards. Uh -huh. the, in the dome, the penthouse condominium is worth more than $11.6 million. So you're saying, like, just, it's a residential thing? It's all residential now. Oh yeah. So it goes to show anything in New York can be converted into condominiums. <laughs> you can see the entrance right there. It's beautiful chandeliers. Highly recommended, especially the top. Well, I'll show you a secret around the corner. So yeah, the government sold a landmark building to make a condominium because it is landmarked as well. So the condo couldn't change any of the exterior, but obviously they changed everything inside. You can see here, right? Here it is. And there's actually a photo of John uh, Petrosino outside here with what he called the Italian squad. And it was a squad of Italian speaking police officers and there's a historic photo right in front so the, usually there's countless women here dressed up in the, into the nines which is means dress up very fancy drinking a cosmopolitan cocktail why well it's because this was featured as one of the main bars in the television show sex in the city from hbo however many of these sex in the city fans actually don't know a cool secret associated with this bar because this bar has been a speakeasy for decades, since the 1920s. There was a secret bar in the back, and it apparently it's still there. And in the secret bar in the back, apparently there's still a tunnel. Now, I can't verify this, but I've heard many reports that it is indeed true. And there's a tunnel that goes right below, right underneath our feet, over here, to the police department. So the police in the 1920s were arresting people for drinking and smuggling in alcohol. And at night after work, they would take a private tunnel <laughs> to drink alcohol. Well, do you think the safety on the city after the pandemic happened? It's a little, little not too good. What do you think about that? Well, I personally feel safe. I personally feel safe. Everyone has a different experience, of course. Uh, I personally feel safe. Uh, I do notice that there are certain areas of the city that has experienced more homelessness. And of those people who are homeless, they are a little bit more aggressive. Uh -huh. There's some drug and drug abuse too. There's drug, drug abuse out in public, yeah. And that tends to be around Penn Station area. But outside of that, I haven't really felt unsafe. And, Nolita, Soho, East Village, basically most of New York.